has been uh, visiting faculty uh, in a few of our residencies, um, specifically in Athens and Paris. Uh, he is also an independent study and dissertation director uh, and has taught for IDSVA. So, familiar face to many of you. Uh, Giovanni Tuza is a philosopher and media researcher based in Lisbon, where he is currently a researcher in philosophy and ecology at the Nova Institute of Philosophy, uh, also known as um, IFIL Nova, at the Universidade Nova de Lisboa. As a documentary filmmaker and video artist, he has had his work screened in Cuba, London, Documentary Film Festival, the Biennale della Danza in Venice, Coimbra, and Paris. His latest work, uh, De la Fin, co author with Alain Badiou, has been published in French in 2017 and then translated into English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And uh, uh, Giovanni is also, you know, given his long uh, collaboration with uh, Jean Luc Nancy, uh, he's an ideal uh, person to introduce. Our, our speaker today. So uh, I will leave it to you, Giovanni, to uh, give us an introduction to his thought. And um, I will see you later. The okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction, for your invitation, Simone, as usual. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, first of all, it's very difficult to speak like this without seeing anybody. So this is why I was suggesting then later when Jaluk Nancy is going to answer some of your questions. He might see you because otherwise it's really hard, even for me and I imagine for him. Also, it's uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be again uh, working with all of you, those I know and those I still don't know. And um, so I will be very straightforward because then in 50 minutes or so, I'm supposed to um, call Nancy and get him into the in, into the platform. So I'll uh, I'll just uh, say some words about his work and how uh, this connects also with what I'm saying tomorrow, because uh, as you know, I may know the, the general title of the, of the session is philosophy and ecology. Uh, but then for this session today, we, we choose and with, um, with Simonetta, we choose to call it the fragile skin of the world. And this is due to the fact that the last uh, publication by Nancy in French is called La Pauvre Fragile du Monde, so the fragile skin of the world. It hasn't published in English, it's just a collection of early essay by Nancy. <clears throat> um, and then I also suggest that there's some, a uh, couple of texts, uh, a selection of few pages from his book from 1993, uh, The Sense of the World. Uh, even if it's not, let's say, um, as, once again, his last book is quite an old book, it's almost uh, 30 years old. I thought that uh, it could it could serve us as an introduction to what we are going to listen today. Uh, I have to anticipate, I have no idea what Nancy is going to speak about. Um, so I think he will um, I improvise about his last work. Um, but so, um, I would start exactly from the title of the book, The Sense of the World, because uh, um, as you might know, uh, Sense is a very uh, special word for Nancy, but it's also um, it's also problematic to be how you translate that in English because in French, sens uh, might translate both English sense but also meaning, uh, and this of course has been always problematic. I, I think for English translations because also sense uh, uh, means somehow. Uh, what the German Zin direction um, would say. So it's also an, a word from the work of Martin Heidegger. Um, I will try not to be um, too complicated today. I know um, many of you are just starting this course, so you might not be familiar with certain terminology. You will be, I think, at the end of this course. Um, so I, I started from that book on Nancy because I think in that book um, he posed a, a very important question, which is uh, in the opening chapter of that book, The Sense of the World, uh, the title of, of that chapter, The End of the World, um, connect the question of the world, 
the question of sense and the question of the end of the world as the end of sense. The end of sense as meaning, let's say. Um, if we have to give a very, very minimal um, definition of the difference between sense and meaning, we could say that meaning is um, something which is signified in a way which once is structured, let's say you might uh, express it or describe it as meaningful. Uh, while sense is always in the act of fabrication. So, like in English, you say making sense, no? Just to say when you are actually making the sense while you are expressing what you are saying. So, I know these are very uh, obvious, somehow, a reflection on the difference between meaning and sense, uh, but uh, for Nancy, this has been always a, a very important point. Even if, if later on, I would say this question of the sense has been um, abandoned a bit by Nancy, and uh, also the question of the word has been modified deeply. Um, in that book, uh, Nancy starts from the end of the world as um, the end of what we would call a mundus or a cosmos. Let's say an order set of of entities, which we might call the world. Word in that sense, as a cosmological entity, Nancy says in that seminal book, um, is approaching its end. The thing is that we don't know what this means exactly. Uh, the fact that not only this world is approaching its end, but also what means to be at the end of this world. Um, why I do think that still this text is quite uh, interesting, especially for people who hasn't been reading and see before. Um, you might be familiar with these broader ecological questions which are raised nowadays in critical theory and, and philosophy. And also you might know that the end of the world has become, again, I would say after the 80s, um, a recurrent topic of most mostly everything from blockbusters movies to um, political <clears throat> movements and uh, of course as you may know or Fridays for Future and other um, activist um, groups. In that book Nancy um, clarifies that you can't really speak of a singular end of the world because in a sense world is never one um, and then we will see why also body is never one. And I think he will say also that, that today. Um, the word is never one because word doesn't mean about like a, a bunch of entities or even an organic body of entities. It rather means um, a relation among those entities which comes before the entities themselves. And in a sense, also, this means that the meaning of those entities is never self-sufficient. So every entity always needs something else uh, in order to access meaning, even its own. Um, in this sense, for, for Nancy, word is not a substance, but is rather uh, a relationship. And this relationship is something which is that at the same time, uh, part of what we call myself, but also something which is outside myself. And this is why Nancy always say that a body, uh, sorry, a word is a word of bodies. So it's made up by bodies. And he never used body as a singular word. He always use a plural because for him, the singularity of each body also means that their staying together, their being with, is always a plurality. So singularity is not at all a kind of self-sufficient um, uh, sphere, like in, for example, in neoliberal sense, but it's rather the admission that when something is singular is, by definition, caught in a plurality. So the word in this sense is never 
a plurality which will become a unit or a unity. So it's always a totality which express in his own development, in his own expression, um, multiplicity or even multitude, which will never be reduced to the unity of, of, of one entity or a substance. This is very important to, to, to point out, the concept of a variety and the concept that body doesn't exist, but we always rather speak of bodies, because in a sense, this brings up to, to our many of the questions which are raised today during those uh, days, especially in the US, because if the body is never one, it doesn't exist such thing like a body, because the body in a sense is always, um, uh, I could say, male or female or black or brown, white, concrete, small, big. In a sense, it's always uh, the, 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 the ghost of a, of, a, of a unique body or, or a single, or, or sorry, or one body never existed. Um, in this sense, I always thought that Jean-Luc Nancy has been, um, I could I say, like somebody who has been working on certain questions, which now, of course, are very, are very um, present in the debate today, like ecology or ecologies. Um, of course, then all the question of the body, which has been very, very central in time especially after the 90s and so on, uh, after Judith Butler work on the bodies of matter and so on and so on. I always um, sensed in Jean-Luc Nancy work a certain uh, sensible um, capacity of, of ability of, of, uh, of reading certain things before they, they arrive in the political and, um, and philosophical debate or be, before, before becoming, let's say, common sense. Uh, uh, nowadays, for us, certain questions, especially when it comes to the to the idea that at the end of the world there is another one, so that in a sense you have always different words, so the ends also cannot be reduced to one. Otherwise, you just have a kind of a um, catastrophical uh, idea of the end, which is unique. Like the end of one word would be the end of the world, while we know that. Many times, the only one word could actually give birth to a different kind of reality, a different history. History is never closed, it is never decided, it's always open end. In a sense, it's always, uh, as Nancy would say, um, in, the, in the search for its own sense, so the direction. Um, so Nancy always connected the idea of the word to the idea of the sense. Uh, to the idea of um, of an ethics, let's say, or now that a word is always a way of dwelling somehow, and this uh, brings us to the question of ecology. As you may know, the Greek word. And sorry, sometimes I could be very basic, but it's important that uh, all of us follow certain things. And then uh, I know that many of you already know these things uh, much better than, than I do. But um, the idea of dwelling uh, could be immediately um, connected to the idea of domesticity, of owning a place, of appropriation of a place. But if we go to the Greek root of the idea of ecology, we could see that ecology is made up of two different uh, words. Uh, the word oikos, which means the house, and the word, of course, logos, which means the discourse, the articulation. I mean, it's, it's, I won't enter into that. but. Um, so usually, let's say that everything which has been connected to the house has always been, been, been connected to something which you own, something which you are familiar with. And so it would seem that ecology would be this dimension of, of, of something you are familiar with, a kind of a planetary interiority in which everything uh, reflects us. If you like the very term anthropology, Scene, which you might be familiar with, uh, which became very, um, very used in the last years, kind of reflect um, this meaning. Anthropocene would mean that this special animal, the anthropos, is reflected everywhere in the world, from ice caps to um, mountains to the sky. 
in a sense, we see ourselves, our species reflected, our action, uh, we read them in geological history or in, geolo in the geological, let's say, stratas. So in a sense, at some point, this uh, animal, which we call the Anthropos, became so um, powerful uh, that he even goes beyond the biological level and he, he scraps his or her history inside the geological level. For Nancy, this kind of understanding of ecology as deep time or deep history, disconnected from social struggle or from the very um, bodily dimension, uh, never existed, let's say, in his own work. For him, ecology is not a, work, a word which speaks of any interiority, because for him, body never is uh, understood as any envelope or um, wrapping, you know, something which enclose an interiority. Rather, body is always this kind of exposition, this kind of um, uh, network of um, receivers and transmitter of sense, which actually is nothing but the outside. But at the same time, the mineral nature of my bones, for example, says that things, the the very outside is inside. So the whole work of Nancy is always a deep questioning of this dimension, of this exchange um, of what outside and inside means. Uh, in this sense, I, I, I read um, also the, the, the use of the word skin, uh, like in this lecture, the skin of the word, um, the fragile skin of the word. <coughs> Because, the, as, you, as you know, the skin is this kind of uh, organ which is um, a threshold or, um, once again, is the opposite of, a, of, of a closing this device, but is rather where actually uh, the inside and the outside communicate. So is this kind of um, endless um, sensing or touch, Nancy would say, that uh, is always uh, what he calls being in the world. Um, I know this is very sketchy, but uh, trust me, Simaita was saying that she was, uh, she was saying that I've been working with uh, Jean-Luc Nancy a lot, and it, it, it's always strange. Um, I mean, this is the first time I'm asked to introduce his work. So for me, it's very odd to jump in his work and to introduce it. Um, because of course, it's been very influential in my life and in, in my in my work itself, um, and also because I think that there is not a proper introduction to, to his work. Uh, the nature itself of his work is uh, highly um, uh, concrete. Uh, Sometimes we use concrete as the opposite of poetic, as the opposite of, but it's very material. So this is why I would always um, speak of his work as, as a kind of ecological kind of work, because for me is what has always, what he has always tried, tried to do, has always been a kind of a deep um, re understanding of what materialism would mean today. Um, so I know I didn't say anything which informed you. I, it's already, Simonetta, it's already time for me to get him, uh, get Jean-Luc Nancy, because he's already... Uh, uh, Giovanni, uh, you, you go, go as far as you want, you know, don't, don't feel pressure. Yeah, no, 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 but he's waiting for me, so I really need to... Okay. So how do we do this? Uh, Let's pause, uh, uh, Angela Lin, can you pause okay. the recording now? And uh, you take it. Okay, I also go out okay. with video yeah. or not. Okay. Uh, uh, I will, I will, I will, I will switch off the video. Giovanni, you can stay or... Uh, As you like. I, uh, I switch off or uh, it's fine. As you want. You can also stay there. Or, or, or maybe we can just leave uh, Professor Nancy for his okay. lecture and then okay. we come back. Uh, Jean-Luc, so I'm going to go out with the video, but I'm going to go out with the video. 
D'accord. Je reviens après quand tu te. And uh, I just want to add that you have a. a dit que la, la, on remet la vidéo pour ceux qui voudraient parler ensuite. Oui, oui. Ouais, donc tu fais tout à... parce que là ça va être enregistré. Donc c'est toi qui parles avec les vidéos. Ok, de toi. Et après, là tu parles en 15 minutes, un truc comme ça. Hein? Tu parles combien? Une demi-heure, 15 minutes? Uh, as you like. As you okay. want. As you want. Okay. You have, we have the whole time. For your life. You have all the time you want. So <laughs> all the time you want. Okay, okay, I go out and I listen to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Then good evening to everybody. Uh, so, uh, well, I see that the, the, the title for this uh, meeting is philosophy and ecology. Uh, well, I would say uh, there is something like uh, a tautology uh, in philosophy and ecology because uh, if philosophy is not ecology, Wait, 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 it is. No, ecology meaning uh, logos about the oikon, that is uh, the place, the place where we live, where we are. The place of being and philosophy is nothing else than ecology and uh, and ecology cannot be something else than philosophy because to really walk on ecology, we have to, to understand first what is the uh, echo, the oikon, which is the same in the economy, as you know, and uh, about ecology or economy. Uh, it is the same question. What are we talking about? For, for an ancient Greek, it was something uh, more or less clear that uh, oikos was home, meaning uh, family, and the family in, a, in, a, in the sense, not in the sense uh, of the restraint and narrow modern family, but the family of uh, all the relatives and the people uh, belonging to the Oikos, including the slaves belonging to the the master of the Oikos. Then the Oikos was, <clears throat> was something uh, relatively clear and different from the polis. In the polis, that is in the city, it can be many Oikos or Oikeia, but uh, the oikos by itself is not a police, and the police is not an oikos. But for us, those differences make no longer sense in a certain way, because uh, all our way to to be, to live to be in relationship with other, to exchange, 
even to talk, to give meaning to them, are so much related with all other people and more and more with the whole people around the world. That is what the, the present pandemic in a way makes more clear, more evident how much we are in the interconnection. In the global network, which precisely is so much a global network that it makes problem, difficulty for the OIKEA, for, for each, each way of, uh, of being in, at some place, being in some, in some country, some city, from belonging to some people. That's all uh, is, is today not clear, is a problematic. And that is, ec ecology is slowly uh, becoming like a, a, a too large world, I would say. And so, in a way, as, as large as, uh, as philosophy, if you want. And a, a geopardy for us is that precisely politics is becoming uh, the same as this. Uh, frequently, we, we speak of uh, uh, politics as if politics would be uh, would be I don't know the the, the realm of uh, of all the relationship all all the way of being being together uh, but being and being together being together the together is not an addition to the being there is no being without being together, especially maybe for, <clears throat> for an ancient Greek or for all, all people of the ancient culture, civilization, society, if you want, uh, <clears throat> it, it was, so the oikos was more or less Clear present. I, I so the was clear what it means to belong to these people, to this city, to this nation, to this etc. To speak this language, what are we speaking now? What I am speaking? I am not speaking my language. I am speaking a um, global, globish, <laughs> international language with which uh, I cannot, I cannot, for example, I cannot write, I cannot, I cannot express uh, what, what, what is for me the the truth, I would say, or the sense of of what I of what I want to to, to say or to grasp to understand. You know. Anyway, uh, and th th then we are we are I think in in a, in an well, we enter an era of general ecology. And uh, maybe maybe it would be a, a good thing to try to I would say to to speak only of a politics in the meaning 
of a certain way to organize the common life of the city, etc. <clears throat> and inside the political project and the political scheme, uh, organization to, of course, to uh, to take what are called the ecological problem. But the ecological problem, the problem, the problem of energy, of the common uh, goods, uh, of uh, how 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 uh, even how we breathe, how we we can eat, uh, what is our relationship with uh, uh, with animals, vegetables, etc. That's all. That's all. Are not peculiar problem. They are general problem of of the general way uh, of life, which is now the techno economical way of life. So on. Then. How, how does philosophy make possible to understand how we are uh, in this general ecological situation? Maybe I think in, in, uh, in one way, which is uh, in a way, very clear to follow through the history of modern philosophy. Something started uh, in modern philosophy just uh, after Kant or with Kant. Why? Why? There is no no chance. Why? Because because Kant is the one uh, who came at the end of the time of enlightenment. That is at the end of the time where the the idea of the general uh, rationality was uh, not invented because the general rationality uh, started in a way with the Greek. But uh, the rationality uh, as at the same time the general rationality and the rationality of man. And then the rationality was supposed to 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 take with it a confidence in the rational man. So enlightenment or the age of the rational man. And the rational man was already the man alone. The man without God. This started uh, in a way a long time before the so-called death of God, of Nietzsche. <clears throat> well, but what, what, uh, what start with Kant? Many, many things I, I, I will not talk now about the philosophy of Kant. No, no. I, I just want to to grasp something in Kant, which is uh, what Kant says precisely about reason. About the reason, you know, big first work of Kant is the 
critique of pure reason. But what is pure reason for Kant? Pure reason, and this is the whole topic of the critique, that is, the pure reason is uh, in itself uh, divided. And this is why it needs a critic. A critic for Kant doesn't mean the criticism of something. No, it means the distinction, making distinction between that and that. And, uh, and, and because of the modern science, which started, as you know, uh, several centuries before Kant, and which was precisely more and more uh, opening problems to the theological uh, way of thinking, uh, which until until now was predominant. Then reason is divided in uh, the way reason is able to produce itself the object of its knowledge. That is science. On the other side, there are other objects, the metaphysical object, for Kant, um, there are three, only that is God, the world, the world as totality, and the I, the I as, a, as an essence as a, or a substance. Those uh, three objects are not experimental object, are not object of sciences. So they are the object of metaphysics and precisely philosophy shall no longer be a metaphysic. Shall no that is, shall no longer admit that the metaphysical object are object or real object like uh, like the object of the sensible experience this is this is the uh, this is a uh, big enormous revolution of kant but but what is very often misunderstood and what was very often misunderstood so so, so all the centuries after Kant, is that Kant doesn't say simply metaphysic is bad and uh, and we we may we we work only with science. Precisely not because uh, Kant knows very well that uh, science doesn't understand to uh, <clears throat> to the, the most important question, which are as well as the question of the good, if you want, or ethics, and the question of the <clears throat> final destination, the goal. And there are the, the topics of the two following critics. Critics of the particular reason and critic of the judgment. Okay. Well, then, then, what does that mean? That means that the metaphysical objects are not object for sure, but they are something. They exist where? In the reason, for the reason. They are, they make together what Kant calls the unconditional. 
all objects are conditioned. The object of sciences are conditioned. They are, if you want, only the idea of the cause and the effect. All objects are conditioned as cause and effect of other objects, etc. But, but the ideas can't call them of the reason, the metaphysical ideas are unconditioned. And reason needs the unconditional. Reason wants the unconditional. Reason is, is made anyway, by what Kant called a drive to unconditional, a drive. The German word is trip, trip. Why I am talking about that now? Because from Kant to Freud, maybe if I say drive, you think necessarily to Freud. Huh? I mean, Freud in German is the same word, trib, and the German word trib is from the same family as drive in English. Uh, in French, we don't have a word of this family, and then we translate uh, trib or drive by pulsion, pulsion. Pulsion, impulse, if you want, a word, uh, a word maybe more for many of us of music, of jazz. Uh, and very, very important words, uh, pulsion or, or the drive. What, what does that mean? this drive of the reason. There are many things, but, but for, for now, for today, I want to say only one thing. The, the drive of the reason will become through Schopenhauer, and Schopenhauer, it takes the name of will, uh, and through Nietzsche, in Nietzsche you have, again, will, of course, as you know, drive, etc. And so it comes to Freud and the drive in Freud. And what is the Freudian drive? The Freudian drive is, is no longer only the drive of the reason that that until now maybe you you understood like a kind of abstract or pure spiritual drive, but precisely with with Freud, but already already in a way with Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, etc. But I don't want to. I will not make it now the history of that, uh, but to say that. With, with Freud, the drive reveals its physical, bodily, material nature. And in a way, if I, if I put everything together uh, in a very short too short way, I would say, from Kant to Freud, and in a way from Freud to, to contemporary philosophy, the reason itself, the reason as the drive it is, the drive to unconditional, the reason, that is, it's, it's human reason. Mm -hmm. Um, reveals or discover its own physical, material uh, nature. What is at stake with Freud, as you know, 
uh, is precisely the, the fact that uh, body is, is, is not a body out of an energy, an energy that that is not the, the energy of the body, but the energy that makes the body. And when I say body, not only the human body, but every body. What is a body? What is a physical body? What 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 says today physics about body that is about material materiality? Says that it is energy. There is no no materiality with, without energy. What we call energy, and the fact that we are precisely in in, in, in a world where the energy is is over overall and is as we know. Maybe our biggest problem. How will we produce the energy we need in one century? We don't know. We absolutely don't know. And it is a very complicated and difficult question. But what means, what means all the use we are making of energy? It is not simply the use of something external, no, the, the use of the energy is, is the use of something which is, which is, which is present in what we call nature or matter. So the physical energy is absolutely the same as a psychical or spiritual energy. There is no, there are no many energies. There is not no more one energy which we, which would be one thing precisely because it is not an object is not a mere object of science. And this is exactly why in the contemporary physics, uh, it is not possible to come to an, a unique theory of, of matter, of nature, world, universe, how you want to call it. But that precisely, precisely because we, we know to to much our our energy energy we can use with, is cannot become a mere object. And when it is an object, it is an object through our uh, treatment to our experimentation, use and transformation of, <clears throat> of nature itself, of physics itself. And in a way, I would say, since, since uh, this time, that is in a way since the time of Kant, despite of course, the fact that for Kant this was absolutely not not evident, not clear. No. But, <clears throat> but that's not the question. The question is that the, the, it, it happens since Kant, or of course, it started before. If you want, you can. We could go back to Spinoza and talk about the, what Spinoza called the conatus, that is a uh, fort. Uh, I hear my, 
My English is too poor to say the, the for the strength, you know, the, to, to, and the push at the same time. So the Conatus of Spinoza is already something like the drive and like the pulsion. Uh, Spinoza, uh, the philosophy of Spinoza is a very, yes, I would say, uh, pulsive uh, way of thinking. Uh, but when I say it's a philosophy of Spinoza, like the one of Kant, that, that, that means that their Spinoza, Kant are names. There's all those names and the works uh, written by those people are products of a history. And at a certain time, our history became on the philosophical uh, uh, realm became the, the, became the history of a drive, a push, a pulse, an effort. The effort of what? No, not, not, not as from a, from a pure mental or spiritual or abstract <clears throat> substance. Because there is, there is precisely there is no there is no force without something material. But the, an energy of of mankind, yes. But then it started to be the time where mankind understood that it comes itself. We men, we come from, as you say, from nature, from animal nature. We are animal nature. We are related to the, the whole animality. That not only related, but the animality is there. I am an animal, and and it is possible to to ask about language in order to understand how language is related to precisely to to drive to energy. What makes Language. Language doesn't make only information because, of course, a lot of information. But uh, all the information, or <clears throat> every information, even the biggest of the big data in information comes finally to or comes from at the same time comes from and comes to something which cannot be another information but which is what if not in information, which is a formation, which is to becoming a form. And the difference between an information and a formation, even I could say the formation of an information. Uh, is, if, I, if I want to, to give an information, not only to to give a, a already uh, ready information. If I if I tell you, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Uh, one hour ago, uh, Donald Trump uh, wrote a Twitter with uh, law and order. This is, uh, I do nothing to give you this information, but if I want to tell you 
something else on the last Twitter of Trump or, or no. If, if I want to, to talk to you about Kant uh, in order to, to make Kant uh, not only what you can read by reading the book of Kant, but which goes through an understanding of Kant through all the reading of Kant, uh, which occurs between Kant and, and us today, then I have to, to transform material, to transform, for example, the, the text of Kant. The world of Kant and the world of and the understanding of Kant by itself, the understanding uh, of the time of Kant, the understanding of the Enlightenment, etc., etc. And so I have to transform that and to form to form a new a new language. That, not a, not a new language that I would uh, create and invent, because the, the language is itself, by itself, a force of uh, self-formation and transformation. But precisely, precisely, language is in the ways like walking, like the natural living species on the earth transforming themselves and changing and continuing through time, etc. etc. So I just want to say that now we have to understand that uh, that there is no abstract or unmaterial reality but that the that the reality we have to to deal with is is a self-transforming reality, which is uh, as well uh, our existence and our our existence and our doing as as man as people. So it is not not so that easy to say man doesn't have to to destroy nature or have to take care of because take care of means that you you have a, a model an idea a reference to take care if i say take care you know what it means I, you know how you have to to take care of you when we are going on the street you have to take care to, because uh, uh, a car can come or and, well, but but in a way there is no care when the whole is at stake. There is no care because there is no there is not a model, there is not a health, there, there is not not a good nature there. No, a good reason there. There is one, one common uh, energy and one push or pulse drive. Which maybe, maybe, is coming to, uh, or may come to, Catastrophe and end is self destruction. This why not? Like like every living uh, being, uh, it 
can have its own end, maybe. Or, or maybe it is, it is transforming itself and able to transform itself infinitely. So, and then, of course, we have to, to try to, to, to invent how to make the best transformation. But what is the best? What is the best? It is precisely, this is precisely that maybe nobody knows is the best transformation uh, the most natural way of life. But what is the most natural way of life? If nature itself is transforming itself and producing language and with language, I, I didn't say that, but uh, technology, you know, te the technology is absolutely natural. Technology comes from the self transforming nature. The, I, I, we would say what, what, what made before a metaphysic makes today a technology. Metaphysics did come to an end. The technology may come to an, another end. What does that mean? This is what to what to we have to to discover, if you want. Well, I will stop. Now, because I think it is already maybe too long, and so you can ask your question if you want. Uh, and Giovanni, would you like to come back? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Nancy. Um, would you like to take a little break before the Q&A? No, I'm no. coming. No, that's okay. All right, so I will ask uh, Angela Lynn, are you there? Hmm? Angela Lynn? Just a moment. So, Simeta, uh, I was going. So, uh, each uh, student start asking to Professor Nancy questions, or, or. Uh... Uh, yes. So now um, I would invite everybody who wants to come up with the video and wants to ask a question to just do that. And the others who don't want to or cannot, please feel free to type your questions in the chat box on the left-hand side of the screen. All right, so uh, I will pay attention to that. Angela Ling will do the same. But please feel free to come up with your videos now, those who want to ask the questions. This and, one. Uh, yeah, I can, voila. It takes some time. To look at them and... Thank you for a very, very uh, poignant and uh, certainly very topical lecture you gave us today, Professor Nancy. I know there will be many questions, so I want to give you some time. Uh, I see you, Sam. So. Would you like to take the lead and ask a question? Sam, you're muted. Yeah, oh, Samantha, we cannot hear you. Uh, you need to make sure that you're logging with the audio, Sam. Hello? No. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sorry. hello. Um, okay, uh, everybody can hear me now. Um, I wanted to say, uh, Dr. Nancy, thank you so very much for all of your work. Um, I continue to be enlightened <laughs> um, in, and deconstructed in many ways by it. It's really disarming and fantastic. So thank you. Um, I am very interested in the role of grief in transformation. And I was wondering if you um, had anything to say about, about grief and transformation and desire uh, based on the sense of the world, what you had written in the sense of the world. About Greece? No. Euh, euh, grief, c'est la, en fait, c'est la douleur. Enfin, c est, c est, euh, grief, c'est la douleur. Ah, grief. Si les... Ah, ouais, grief. Moi, un... No, but you know, I, 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 am, I am becoming a, a little deaf. <laughs> so, grief, grief, ah, grief. Voilà, ok. Ah. Ah. Oh, no. You know, gr grief, grief is uh, um, grief is is an expression of a refusal, you know, a refusal uh, of of uh, something uh, by by my my body. You know. no. Then uh, grief belongs to the constitution of the body. And then we, we have to enter something. I didn't talk today about that, but you know, we have to enter uh, on this simple fact that uh, there are many bodies. There are many things. You know, I've, I've frequently said to, uh, that uh, the question of Leibniz, you know, why is there something and not nothing? Is a, is a right, of course, but has a, a little defect. That is, the question should be why are there some things in the plural? Because it cannot be one thing. So then the, the plurality, the plurality uh, is, a, is a condition of the, of the existence itself. And in the way, uh, in this way, uh, we, we could say that uh, the, 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 the God alone, uh, the, the, uh, an absolutely unique God being absolutely alone, makes no sense, it is, it is not possible. And I would say that even, even the, to say the Islamic God, who is the most alone uh, among, among all the gods, in a way, but the Islamic God is the God who at the same time is, is, a, is a creator of the world and he says, Many times in the Quran, I can destroy and rebuild the world in one day. This is very easy for me to do. What does that mean? That means that this God, this God in, in its loneliness, uh, is not absolutely loneliness. It, it is, he, he is in relation to, okay. Then there is, there is, it cannot be one thing. There are many things. If there are many things, and the, the many things are, are uh, in relation to each other. And the relation to each other implies, first, it is possible to, to come together, but that at the same time, it is uh, the possible uh, not to destroy the other. And emphasizing in the in a, in a way in, the, in nature, the destruction of the other thing 
the destruction, uh, to say, of the other cell uh, um, is a, or the destruction between particles is a, is, is a rule. So, uh, precisely a body, a body, a body in the, precisely in the meaning of, uh, of, an, how to say, in the meaning of what, I don't know, <laughs> meaning, so that, that we mean when, when we think about a body, a, a, a body starts when there is a, a kind of skin, you know. Uh, even, even the simple cell has a skin. Uh, that is, uh, I don't know in English, a uh, in, uh, in paroi. So, no. Yeah, a wall mm -hmm. uh, is also a membrane, like yeah, a membrane. Right, it's a wall. Membrane, exactly, membrane. So, uh, and yeah. for, for what? For, for what is a membrane? The membrane is to to admit or to non-admit or to reject other things. So, then when we have a very, a very sophisticated uh, membrane like uh, our skin, uh, you you have places where we can get images, sounds, etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, but 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 precisely the the more a body is, I would say, complex, sophisticated, the the more it is built in order to have many relationship with the outside. Besides, it is very interesting that uh, in, in the, the talking animal, which is uh, human animal, the talking animal has, uh, has uh, the possibility to, to talk, besides the possibility to talk goes through the same opening than the possibility to eat. And the possibility to eat is a very, uh, is much more elementary than the possibility to, to talk. You know? so, <clears throat> just to think uh, about, about how much our body is made to, to allow the possibility of talking, you know, the ah, muscle here, etc., etc., the teeth, the tongue, everything is made. So, uh, so, but, but now back to the grief. What, what, what try to enter and is is uh, is not good for is destroying for uh, for the for the body makes grief and precisely in the grief in the grief uh, uh, i have the, the feeling of an externality an exteriority something that that i want to reject i, I don't want to to have it it's better, right? but and oh. no, no, this is what you, yes, you're, 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 you're right, you're right. You have to stop me. Because no, 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 I, no. I, I, I thought you were. No, no, I continue. all the time. I know, I know, I know. But, but of course, we should, we should say very, very more. So I just, just want to say at least one thing, one thing that is that precisely. Uh, we 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 know very well how to uh, cause a grief to another person, that is to hurt uh, him or her. And what is to hurt? To hurt is precisely to uh, to to use the skin, the membrane, not according to its. Uh, opening ways, but uh, by op opening, I would say, opening, a, opening a, 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 a new way, which is, I take a knife 
and I hurt you with a knife, then I, I open I open an opening which is which does not belong to belong to your skin. On the contrary, as I figured, uh, the sexual penetration is not. It is the ambiguity of the word penetration. You know, because the penetration in itself is not is not uh, is not uh, opening an op you know, an an ouverture, an opening. An opening, yes, yes, yes. Uh, which does not exist. On the contrary, on the contrary, in a way, in a way, our body is completely open from here until the anus, you know. So, well, and, uh, and in a way, it is like a, a kind of invitation to circulation of many things from from outside. And more, more than uh, any other thing, the, I would say the, the thing, the thing of the meaning, the sense, the sense which is entering our ears and going through. The, uh, but and then then we could we could go over, but, but stop stop with that. Thank you very very much. No, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Um, Professor Nancy, before I uh, let the next uh, person come up with a question, I just want to say to all of you who are calling in with the phone that for some reason you cannot unmute yourself now after we did that. So um, I apologize for it. We didn't know there's this technical limitation. So if you want to speak, please call back in. So hang up and call again, and then you will be with the audio function. Thanks for your patience. And uh, I also want to read a message by um, Professor George Smith, who is the IDSVA president and founder. And he writes, um, Jean-Luc, many, many thanks to you for these unforgettable thoughts, which you have so generously shared with us today. We remain ever in your debt. I will defer my question so that our students can experience as much as possible the honor of engaging with you today. Warm regards, George Smith, IDSVA president. Thank you, thank you. I think I understood the message. Sorry, my accent is also very bad. Thank you. Um, okay. Because I think the question is very, very important because, you know, I mean, at least I speak for me, I don't know if it's the same for Professor Nancy, but since it's a bit difficult to speak to so many people alone on the screen. Uh, we can actually seeing a face coming up with a question is much e easier and mm -hmm. helps the discussion. And maybe um, it's good so Professor Nancy could also develop more. Uh, so please ask questions. It's uh, it's the time now. Come up um, uh, with your screen if you want. Um, while we wait for that, I will ask a question that came in early. Uh, so, there is uh, Eileen. Oh, okay. Hi, Eileen. Unmute yourself. Hi. 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 Thank you both, uh, um, uh, Dr. Tusa and um, and Nancy, for uh, both the introduction and the and the um, and the talk. Um, in reading the uh, world um, sense of the world, I was really struck by. Um, by much of it uh, and, and, and the thoughts, but the, 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 the intermingling of interior and exterior and your description of the knot um, as, uh, as untying and uh, replacing and, um, and, and as process. I'm interested in how in talking about ecology and what's happening in the world, um, how you see that as, as not just action, but also as drift, um, which is also mentioned in your sense of the world. The idea of, um, I think in French, it's, it's derive, derive, uh, drift. Uh, the idea of things just occurring uh, on their own momentum, but without conflict and without um, 
a desire. Tu peux euh, me dire un peu si je n'ai pas tout compris là. Ouais, là, alors là, tu disais qu'en fait, tu parlais de la liaison des liaisons. Pas par ici, hein, il parlait du sens du monde, en fait, du livre. Mais après, comment tu vois les événements, euh, disons, qui, qui sont en train de d'arriver aujourd'hui avec ces concepts qui t'utilisent de la dérive drift quoi comme tu dis comme la dérive des continents toi quelque chose qui qui en fait euh, arrive ou dérive toi à dérive je pense qu'il dire à la dérive des événements en fait comment tu comment tu comment tu you comment tu 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 comment Professor Nancy, to, to expand more on this idea of drift, of something which happens without kind of a, kind of something which happens on a way, kind of a letting be or, or something like that, right? Uh, co correct. He he mentions it in his um, yeah. But what's world. what's uh, the question? Because of course it's a figure you use. Mm -hmm. But what's your question in relation to the events today? If I if I might ask you just to be more precise in the answer for Professor Nancy, maybe. Yes, thank you for, for, for clarifying. The, the, the act of what's happening today in terms of nature and, and the care of the world is how much or, or how would he describe this, this as uh, some of it is momentum, um, but some of it is, is possibly de, uh, de, derive, uh, drift, uh, that, that the, the actions of nature are happening on their own. And if he could just elaborate on, on, on oh. that. Dérive, hein, c'est bien ça, Giovanni. Mais comment ouais, on... Drift, ça dérive, oui, oui. Et in English, qu'est-ce que c'est, dérive Drift. Drift, ah, drift. Like when you say continent, continent, drift. Oh, it's precisely. Well, to have a drift, you have to have before a, a right way. I can't say, uh, I can't say on the boat, you know, uh, derive in French, or I don't know if drift in English is the same, derive is a, is a, is a word for boat. Uh, a, a small boat have a, a, what we call derive, that is in a key, uh, mobile key. So if you are going the right way, you have one way. If you are going, uh, if you are not governing, it is, it is a matter of governing the boat. You know, if you are not governing, or the, if there is no no longer a captain uh, on the boat, uh, the boat starts to to drift. So, okay. But how can we talk about a drift? If we don't know the right way, what is the right way? Now we think, oh, or maybe not, not precisely not now, but yesterday or for yesterday, we thought the right way was something going straight away to uh, to what? to uh, perfect mankind, a perfect society with full justice or with uh, uh, everything for everybody. In, in, in a way, it was, uh, it was uh, still the thinking of Marx, you know, and uh, And we was we was in this way of thinking. In a way, we are still there. But but now I would say since not not so much time, maybe since 20 years, you know, we started to understand that uh, this right way is absolutely no sure. And why? Why? Because every step. In this direction, appears to be at the same time a, a counter step in an other direction. Uh, for example, we, we make enormous 
progress in the medicine. You know? we, we, we know how to, 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 to take care for, for so many, many things. But, but what are we doing with, with medicine? We are doing uh, people in the developed countries, you know. We are making people living more and more old, but the most of the time not having a very good, good life, you know. So <clears throat> it, is, it is not easy, easy to be to be 80 like I am now, you know. It's okay because I, 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 am, I am not, not in a very good heart. I have many things to, to do. To, so, and then uh, uh, more, other, other progress, like all the progress in the, the, in the, the speed of exchange, of information, etc., uh, uh, etc., et so, are producing a, a lot of, a growing lot of, of problem. So, simply, the, we don't have a right way. And I think that the, and this is the first time in the history of mankind, you know, because, not because before, before. <laughs> not 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 because the the uh, before uh, the people didn't know the right way, but because uh, the most of the time the right way was the way out of the world. You know? The right way, uh, the, the right way did have to do all the time with death. So all societies understood uh, in a way why people are dying and that it makes in a way it makes sense you know in a very different way but but now the modern civilization uh, does not understand nothing with death death does not no longer belong to the right way the right way should be immortality. But first, uh, it is not that easy to, to get immortality. And second, uh, immortality maybe uh, is, is a strange idea. No. What, what would we be able to experience, to feel, to live? If we would live uh, for 500 years, at least, which is not immortality, but it would be. So you see, so then precisely we we are we are out of any right way. Then we cannot talk about a drift, or we are in a permanent drift. Oh. And this is why Derrida, Derrida uh, make a, a, a word in French that is destinérance. So destinérance is a combination between destiny, destiny was a name for the right way that is in the, in the meaning of the way already given or imposed to an individual or to a people or no, no, no. So, so destiny and errance errance how you translate that in errance. 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 so you can't make that in english maybe the same destiny errance destiny errance so. uh, it's not yeah. translated in english books mm -hmm. huh? it stays like in french in english destiny errance is yeah. left destiny errance. The books of so, uh, but what does that mean? Now, uh, the, 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 word, the word destinérance is nice, but uh, has no meaning. 
is, is a contradiction in the meaning. So what, what does that mean? Are we able uh, now to understand ourselves as being without without uh, a unique and terminal and final destination. That is, are we able to get a new understanding of death? I think this is all, all the question is here. Because if we don't understand uh, death, then death is a, is a mere accident there is a, this is is, a, is only negative or bad if you want to and if we are able to to grasp to grasp that in a, in another way uh, I mean, not individually, because of, I think that many, many individual people, I would say, have an understanding of this. I think many, many, and very, very simple people. You don't need to be a philosopher to understand this. But no, no, I've known many, many people as well, philosophers and others and philosophers who understood perfectly, uh, perfectly, perfectly, perfectly doesn't mean uh, with pleasure and uh, of course I want to, no, no, but yes, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. So my, my, it make, made sense in, in some different way. But, uh, but, for a long time, uh, our society did have a, a collective understanding of that. But now we, we do, we no longer have that. But may, maybe we, we are now in, in, uh, in the possibility to, to think anew about, and it, during the pandemic, you know, it has been very interesting it is still because uh, because it, you know, I speak like a, a French people we French we 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 have the feeling it is it is uh, the end but it's not true but I know that it is not the same in the, in the United States in the in Brazil or in India etc. Well. Uh, Uh, I, think, lost him and see. I think he touches something. <laughs> Can you Why help him, uh, Giovanni? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just let me remove. But give me one second. Thank you, Eileen. That was a very rich question. In the meantime, uh, others who want to come back uh, come on screen. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, excuse okay. me. Here's Nancy. I am back. Excuse me. I don't know what happened. Oh, it happens sometimes. We all get disconnected. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, the video maybe. is not on. Il faut que tu appelles l'autre fois la caméra. En bas, en bas à droite, et après à nous, en gauche, sharing, et après c'est accès. Ah oui, ma caméra, ma caméra, oui. Ouais, c'est ça. Voilà. Ah, okay. Ça va, là, voilà. It's yeah, coming through, yes. Here you, see you, again, yes. Here you are, thank you. Bon. Bon, ben voilà. Alors, stop, stop. Next Allez. question. OK. Yeah. Thank you, Eileen. Um, I'm going to read the question, uh, Professor Nancy, that came in from a student. 
who is writing a dissertation on public space where you are one of the key thinkers. So she would like to know, her name is Catherine Melcher. Um, she's working on the perceived conflict between uh, public and aesthetics that occurs in public space, design, disc the design discourse. The discipline of public space design is based on these two foundational concepts, aesthetics and public, and they, um, they struggle to find the common ground. So she's wondering how your work on being with and the sense of the world could help overcome these perceived conflicts and lead to new approaches to designing public spaces? Well, so, so if I answer now well, it, it is a question so, about public and aesthetics. Yes. yes, which seem to be in conflict. And she's trying to figure out how they can be, how the idea of being together could be applied to the ma making of public spaces. If you have any thoughts on that. Well, I think, yes, it is, it's true. There, there is, there is a, like a, a contradiction between aesthetic and public in one way. Mm -hmm. uh, because, because precisely, not not every body likes the same object or likes the same the same music or the same film. Okay, but but again again back to Kant just for 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 a minute. But as Kant says. The, the property of the aesthetical judgment is to um, to want that it becomes uh, universal by knowing that it is not. So the, the difference between the rational judgment is a it's for everybody. Uh, everybody can understand the, the mathematical demonstration, but not everybody will agree that uh, Beethoven or Picasso are great artists. Oh, and why? Because uh, because in aesthetic. Uh, it goes about precisely about pleasure and eventually grief. That is to to like and not to like. What does that mean? That mean to feel something that is coming toward my own need, my own expectation. You know. So, uh, and because because it is absolutely normal that we are different. If we are not different, then we are not. No, so, so the difference is not only the quantitative difference I talked about before when I said there is no one thing, but there is no one thing, and there is no one being. That is, there is no one feeling, and precisely. Feeling to to feel is what is the the most uh, most singular, and not only not only I would say individual or peculiar, but singular. That is, I feel at a certain time, and I feel something else at another time. I can I can uh, I can enjoy uh, Beethoven, but at another. Another time, I, I enjoy uh, <clears throat> Lou Reed. Anyway, I'm a little old, of course. I don't. I'm unable to 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 say some actual singer, but no. Okay, so but 
But everybody, and then I think this is what, what Kant has in mind, everybody can understand that everybody wants to take part of his uh, uh, aesthetical preference with the other. So, uh, of course, it is a matter of discussion. Uh, and for example, it, it can be a discussion about wha what, wha what will be uh, uh, good to, to put on, on the street in the city, you know, the public art in the city. Uh, frequently, I, I, I see some, some, I don't know, some public work of art, and I think, oh, how ugly it is, how could they do that, or, or with the architecture. Uh, so, uh, the question, the question then is not to think in the possibility of having one aesthetic for everybody, but, but to think how it is possible to share the aesthetics between between a, a community, you see, and uh, and uh, certainly, in, in, partly it is it is a new question because until now we didn't know such such a mixture and a complexity of forms that, that we know today. Uh, and and maybe maybe there, there is something that which uh, which will all the time happen in all society that is a uh, part of people. I don't know. Take an example. Uh, I think you, you, yes, Joyce. How many English speaker around the world like Joyce? It's very few because Joyce is not understandable. I mean, at least Finnegan's Wake. But even even Ulysses, you know, or you know, in France, if I speak about Proust, I mean, the majority of French people will will tell me, no, I cannot read Proust. I don't understand. It is painful and annoying. So, and. Uh, Maybe, maybe that that cannot be uh, uh, in, in another way, but precisely that means that uh, that has to do with really the, the constitution of the society or of the community. You know, how it is, and uh, there are times where the most uh, elitist culture has a communication, uh, a very mysterious and hidden but real communication with the majority. For example, at least in France, I could say, uh, take somebody like Rousseau. Rousseau, Rousseau was well, well, is not really easy to read. Not all it depends, but but even 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 the the La Nouvelle Héloïse, even the novel of, of Rousseau is not that easy to read. It's, it is a little annoying, long, you know, it's not so long. But Rousseau, through the at least through, through the 19th century was a kind of national popular figure. You know, everybody knows something about Rousseau. 
Of course, it was through French Revolution, but more than the French Revolution. It was a certain idea, a certain representation of sensibility, of nature, precisely, etc., etc. In, in, in another, another way, it was a little the, the same with, uh, with Balzac in the 19th century. Uh, much more with Victor Hugo, but other writers or philosophers remains absolutely reserved, I would say, to, to the elite <laughs> the people. And, but, but, there are, I think, there are certain communication that makes at a certain time uh, there is a, a, like a the mutual understanding of uh, different parts of the people, but, and at other time, no. For example, to, today, today it is certain that the the music of the young people uh, is for, for, for a big part in music that uh, uh, older people uh, cannot take. No, I, I can do nothing with, uh, with the rap. I, I, can, I cannot. I cannot. My, my, my grandson tried to let me uh, I say, well, okay, okay, I, I, the way. Anyway, I will say it's not because this time I, I am talking about the age and the generation, that this is, but precisely age and generation is a kind of difference. Other kind are, uh, are more social, uh, are more related to the uh, to the place in the society, etc. <clears throat> but may, may, I, may I say something? Hmm? May, I, may I say something? Oui, oui, oui. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. No, no, but it's just to, because I've seen, like, like I was scrolling, there are hundreds of, of questions there, but people don't ask, so they just write their question there. But, um, so please uh, don't be shy, J just jump in. It's easier if you just talk. Um, but uh, about what you were saying, um, maybe we could uh, put this together again with the idea of, uh, because you were speaking about generations, age, um, um, so participation and so. So in a sense, uh, from the beginning of this lecture, let's say that, as you said, ecology is becoming a broad term, right? Well, it's not even a specific word as it was when it was created by Heckel in the 18th century, but rather it's becoming a way of uh, thinking about the relationship, which is not simply a historical one, not just generational or receiver of generation, but is rather plural and somehow also conflictive, like in a sense, historically speaking. So you may have as you say, rap and many things at the same time in an ecology of, of, of uh, some some decades ago, we would say constellation, Jean-Luc, now is out of, uh, a constellation is a bit out of fashion, but an ecology of, 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 uh, of different times and different spaces uh, which participate at the same time. <clears throat> um, we will, so, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, constellation is a very good good word, I think. Yeah, but now it's not as used as it was before, you know, because it's uh, it's becoming out of fashion as well. No, but I was thinking just for the students, so we might jump in. Um, what Professor Nancy was speaking now is exactly connected to uh, the the idea of ecologies, like that there are many ecologies of thought at the same time. And so history now is not the only way we do think about um, social struggle or even aesthetics. Even aesthetics, now we, we might talk, as uh, Nancy was saying, of a general ecology. 
So even the aesthetical uh, domain is brought into that. While it used to be more an historical understanding of aesthetical judgment, now more and more this kind of uh, pride is the same time. But I, I, I just invite you, since you are writing so many questions, please just put the questions in this uh, uh, debate. So it's more interesting for, okay, let's check out. Uh, Yes, I think uh, Jack is coming in. Great. Hi, Jack. Um, Hi, how are you? Um, well, thank you. Um, I have a question related to some of the ideas of the connections you made earlier between um, ecology and economy and care. And I was wondering what were your thoughts about, and you started talking a little bit about the pandemic. So what were your thoughts about how the past months of sheltering in place, being on lockdown during these times, affects our senses by transforming our sense of the world, um, by transforming our sense of the bodies that we can no longer encounter? And furthermore, how these transformations shifts our understandings of the ecologies of care and the economies of care. Alors, tu peux me euh, résumer un peu Oui, de... oui. Alors, elle demandait si, en fait, euh, disons, pendant cette lockdown, tu vois, les, comment dire, le confinement, mm. parce qu'elle t'avait parlé avant de la care, elle t'avait parlé, en fait, des de, de la so de soins et de prendre soin de quelque chose, et en fait, l'effet, comment euh, le confinement affecte cette dimension euh, de prendre soin de quelqu'un ou de soi-même ça un peu la question qu'elle pose. Um, oh yes, but but the the, the lockdown uh, the lockdown is not forever. Uh, is is uh, related to the pandemic. So in itself, in itself, it is uh, <coughs> it it is it is unpleasant. But it is not so so important. No? It is it is very unpleasant and difficult for people who, who are not living in in in, uh, in large places. You know, like uh, I don't know. Uh, between uh, I remark I remark since uh, the, the starting of the lockdown in France that uh, uh, almost all the people I know doesn't suffer from the lockdown because they live like me in comfortable apartments you know but people uh, suffer from the lockdown when they live in very small 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 apartment and uncomfortable and in in suburb cities when where they are in, in towers etc you know not to speak about the people on the street. So, uh, but I am very surprised, very surprised that so many people belonging to, to the same social, how can I say, the couche social, the milieu. The social class, no, it's not class, it's a social okay, milieu. Social huh? milieu. Social milieu. Social milieu. That so many people uh, claim about the loss of freedom and the loss of the possibility of touching the other. But you know, I, I want to ask when you are going. When there is no lockdown in the normal time, you are going in the street, you don't touch everybody. No? On the contrary, it is forbidden. No? If I touch somebody in the in the subway, I am suspected of being in a husband, you know? No? Well, so it is something very strange. It is very, I think, a very strange reaction, uh, especially uh, about touching that uh, uh, suddenly 
we cannot touch the other and when many people uh, uh, react as if we would do that all the time but we says no we don't of course of course we cannot we cannot shake the end but shake the end. not shaking the end is not very but we cannot embrace and of course we were our, our society is, is a society of embracing our developed society uh, okay okay but if we know that it is for a while we, we can't wait can't wait i don't i don't as I, I know that it is a little more complicated when it is goes on old people the, or the grandfather and the grandchildren etc etc but but no i think it, it is it is or it, it should be a very uh, very good excellent opportunity to think more about precisely about touching you know about touching that is about approaching the other about what means the proximity what is a prox touching implies proximity proximity means the most uh, near what is the most near what means the nearness to somebody that is that is a nearness of the skin to the skin what does it mean why is there such a taboo about touching in all societies in different ways but all societies know a uh, very important taboo about touching freud has a, a, a quasi a whole chapter about that in totem on taboo if i remember when it is uh, so then mm, we, we, we are we are a society which through all its economy and, and ecology is without touching but if we are forbidden to embrace the, the, the very few others that we embrace among the enormous uh, number of, of people in general we 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 complain but we we, we would better complain about uh, the fact that in the normal time we don't we don't have a good use of touching maybe why why it is so that uh, now uh, if if you go in in, in the subway if uh, if uh, somebody touch your, your hand you know and, uh, you will think what what he is doing what you what you want no he or she so then why why are we in such a in such a terrible uh, climate that uh, the, the idea of the sexual uh, harassment and violence is everybody there you know? and that show why why it is uh, it is needed today that you make a smile if you are alone in the street and you cross a man you make a smile in order to show that you are you are very peaceful and you know, but uh, no when when uh, a very long long time ago i started to to come to america and i was on, on the campus in, uh, and going through the campus, I was surprised by so many uh, people was smiling by crossing me. Most California, Jean-Luc. Huh? 
But it was because you were in California. Yes, in California. You yes. know, I know. Yes, yes. But, but my colleague explained me, don't think all those people are, are liking you. No, yes. they are showing uh, we are we are peaceful. We 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 want we want aggress each other. You know. Right. Of course, yeah, yeah. It could be, be, but but California, California is a, is a kind of uh, compendium of uh, you know of precisely of what I am talking about. And today, and today, in a, in a way, it, it starts to be almost the contrary. The smile could be a sexual invitation. Oh. Well, we have no. That all shows that we have a, we have a difficulty until until this very uh, small, I would say, humble level of the relation between between us. Because, because today our society lost a lot of uh, of marks of recognition, of salutation, of respects, of uh, tenderness, etc., etc. So, mm. Go, go in Japan. In Japan, you you will never embrace. Uh, I mean, the first time I. I did go to the house of a Japanese friend a, a long time ago. I entered and he did have uh, two young daughters, uh, very, very young, you know. So I enter and I, I was, uh, I start to embrace them as I was afraid. So, because it is absolutely strange to, to the, to the ordinary, uh, custom there. So, the, and not to speak about many, many other, other way, other, other, in a way, we could say even uh, other rituals of communication. We, 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 we are, we are in, in a trouble with, uh, with, uh, yes, with that we, with a ritual of communication. So, Maybe it's a good time to, I don't know, to start again, to reinvent and to re, to transform or to or to invent uh, our signs of mutual recognition. Because the point is here is is what does that mean to recognize each other? And uh, of course, it is, it is it is very important. Oh. Okay, I think he did again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, since I think he'll come back. He'll come. He will back, come back alone this time. So I was. Um, I might take uh, the lead for some seconds just to say that. Um, also. Um, I think that the word uh, Jekka disappeared somewhere, but, but uh, I think the word <laughs> care is also. Uh, I put my hand on the mouth. Oh, yes, yes, I ah, yeah, I put my hand on the mouth and chips. Yeah, it's, yeah just What's saying problem? that the word no. care is I also. Don't touch the mouth. <laughs> uh, Giovanni, can you also, can you help? Yeah, me? It's coming back. It's coming back now. You know something. Okay. Um, so the 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 word care is. No, I uh, I was just saying that while you were away for some seconds, that the word care is always used as, as caring is already a good thing as such, you know, like, you know, the care as a domain of affective, you know, uh, tenderness towards somebody like, but care, care could be also very well, I, no, I, I don't like care. I don't like the idea of care because the idea of care implies that the, so the other is is weak, is sick. So 
Well, no. Why? Why not think that the other, the other is uh, even if he or she is sick? That's not the question. The question is: uh, uh, I have to be in relation to what makes the most proper. Uh, being then, I would say the most, as I said the, the before, the, the, the proper conatus with the word of Spinoza or the proper dry of the other. You know? Then I have to address the force of the other and not the weakness. That doesn't mean that I have to say, oh, care. Care yourself with yourself. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't care about that. No. But but uh, the the idea of the care is an idea of of weakness. But to to what do we take the measure of the weakness? To what? To the health? To the to, no. Uh, what if we start uh, by the presupposition that the other is strong and uh, that I have to address this strongness and uh, I have to yes to to enter in and no uh, You know, when 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 you are when you are sick, of course you you need to be to to have a doctor, etc. But precisely, we don't have to be doctor for each other. Besides the doctor, we know how much it is important to have other people and other people are not doctor or the, and, and not and not even doctor of the soul you know because there are no doctor of the soul and maybe the the, the most the, the most uh, <clears throat> most important sort of Freud and Lacan is to think that psychoanalysis is not oh that was uh it's not okay. made. The look. Could you repeat? Because we lost you when you said Freud and Lacan. Psychoanalysis is not a venue lost. You're the Finnish. Could you repeat that? No. Uh, uh, that psychoanalysis is not a kind of medicine. It's not like, say, the Lacan and so. It's not made to make the ego more strong. In fact, the confortation du moi, the making strong the ego. Enforcement in English. Hmm? The enforcement. Enforcement, voilà. No, no. no. Uh, of course, of course, uh, of course, if, if a psychoanalyst uh, makes a, what they call a, a Ah, no, I don't uh, a psycho. Well, a psychological, psychological uh, help that exists. I, I, I say nothing against that. It can be very, 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 very useful. For, okay, but but this, I, I say just that that. Uh, the, the big idea of psychoanalysis, which is an idea, an idea which may be beyond any possibility of, of practicing psychoanalysis, that is another question. But the main idea of psychoanalysis is that it, it, it goes to, to go to to the a point of uh, the point where which is the, the point of the, the, the most 
proper singularity of one people and to to allow to one people to buy by himself or by herself to uh, invent its i would say that is with that or to invent uh, or reinvent its own story or, um, and not and not to become um, more quiet uh, in the society uh, da, 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 da. well then um, Uh, I, I don't say we don't have to to help the other, but uh, but our the, the ground of our relationship to the other cannot be this one. And shall be, uh, shall have to do with with, with a strongness. We as well with with a, with a moral strongness, which is uh, which is which what we call the dignity. What is the dignity? The dignity, the dignity is not uh, take that on the real way. It is frequently used to to die. In the dignity, uh, what means to die in the dignity? That is, that is precisely to 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 die. <clears throat> I would say almost out of the care. To die in the dignity is not that that other people take care of me to help me to not too much. Uh, to suffer. Of course, it is. Maybe it is better not to suffer, but not to suffer too much is uh, may be precisely the choice, is the decision of the person uh, itself. And to make this decision, you need you need a certain strongness. You have to decide that. And in, the, in that way, this is uh, the reason for what doctors are, are are right when they refuse uh, to to help to die people who doesn't seems to be really. Uh, uh, really strong enough to to know what what they want. So the, the, it is like like uh, what 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 is the economical dignity? The economical dignity uh, is not only. The possibility to get enough money money to have a, a normal uh, life, because precisely what is a normal life? Where starts and where ends a normal life? Yeah. But of course, we, we we know we know what what is needed uh, so that that one people may live. Live precisely in in the condition where he or she may have by himself or herself the the force to to live because it is it is difficult to live. There, there is a lot of of difficult things to do to to suffer. That, uh, uh, so. I think that our, our society uh, has precisely nothing to feel, I would say, to feel the place of the dignity. 
with such dignity. And, and now we are, we are uh, there is a temptation to, to feel yeah, the, the dignity with the simple life. Life, okay. Okay. And it was, all this ambiguity was still there, uh, or is still there with the pandemic. Uh, uh, what does that mean to save uh, life which are no, no longer really, uh, really living life? This is not a false question. You see, I, I, I am absolutely for, for the, for the see, protection, the care, if you want, of the old people. But at the same time, I think we cannot avoid to recognize that we don't know what we do with the length of the life. We don't know. Uh, how can can we? Uh, oh, 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 we have, we have to to invent something. I don't know. Just recently, I've seen a, a, a film about precisely about the old people. That is a, a film from the French filmmaker Claude Lelouch, who makes a very Yes, <laughs> Giovanni, you went that. that because no, 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 no. I think you thought all the looks is a very bad filmmaker, a very no, sentimental. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, maybe that uh, he made uh, almost uh, 52 years ago, I think, a film called A Man and a Woman, a nomin Farm, which was, I think, worldwide very well known, you know. With the music, jabba dabba da, jabba dabba da, etc. And now, oh, last year, Belouch made uh, a film with the four main actors of an homme et une femme, or a man and a woman, that is Jean-Louis Trintignant, Anouk Aimé, and the two actors who was children in the film uh, 52 years ago. So the, the same people, same people play the role in the new film. And this is, this is a very interesting film, much more interesting than the first one. Much less, I would say, much less uh, sentimental and very, very strong about uh, the, I, because in the film, mainly uh, Jean-Louis Dredignan, which is an old man, very old and, and not not really well, even in, even in this uh, in this thinking, he is precisely presented in, in a way that uh, shows what is the most uh, what is still the, the most strong in him. So, but. Then, then we, we we should make an explanation of the film itself, etc. But I think, and I thought after the film, I thought maybe the way uh, are we able to make a work of art with the age? What does that mean? I don't know. But this film, this film makes. And, and in the film, the actor himself, Trentignan, and the woman, Anouk Aimé, uh, they make, yes, they make from their own age, uh, they made yes, a, work of, uh, a work of art. What, what does that mean? That means giving a form, you know. So, Maybe, maybe I will stop with that. Maybe I could be just that. To take care does not go in the direction of making a form. On the contrary, 
to make a form, to build a form, to invent a form, to, to transform. Other. This is not a matter of care. Well, stop. Thank you, Professor Nancy. Thank oh, you. Asking, uh, uh, some people were asking about the name of the films. So in English, is uh, I googled it. So it's uh, the best years of a life. Ah, uh, you're right. Was, you're right. It's all the plus belles années de la vie. You're well, absolutely right, Giovanni. Yeah. Uh, 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 je vois que uh, je vois que il va être bientôt sept heures et demie. Alors moi j'avais prévu jusque jusque là sept heures et demie. Alors disons si on peut Vous êtes okay. encore une question et arrêtez parce qu'après il faudrait que je appelle quelqu'un. Ok. Je vais prendre une question plus. Merci beaucoup. Dans cinq minutes, le professeur Professor Nancy a besoin de pour un autre engagement. Ok. Uh, oh, Manihu, would you like to come up and ask your question or should I ask it for you? Uh, it's better if you make up. Maybe like I, I will ask it. So, oh, Manihu Amachi asks How does the sense of the Occident? of partition, parenthesis, of partition difference to existence, ignite a world of being two, being four, being by and being and being two. The sense of the Occident. Alors, Giovanni, tu veux dire... La question, c'est, en fait, je, si j'ai bien compris, c'est euh, si l'essence de l'Occident, en fait, c'est encore... Euh, un point de référence, comment on peut donner, comment on peut donner la force, la direction, si l'Occident peut encore donner la direction au être avec ou si toi. Un, en fait, là, je pense que c'est un peu la question si l'Occident c'est encore euh, un point of initiation, toi, quelque chose qui peut donner un point de départ ou même le point final. L'Occident Ouais. I don't think so. The last question is the toughest one. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so because because Occident, Occident in the, I don't think so. Well, first, because uh, Occident is a name, is a name of uh, this story where metaphysics becomes. Uh, um, empty and uh, and uh, and and science become on in the place of metaphysics and, and now science is uh, is showing that uh, uh, it is not going to 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 the to a final uh, meaning okay then i think that there is a, a there is i would say kind of Tautology between Occident and what is the meaning of Occident that is falling down, you know. And uh, since a long time, I think that it is not by chance that we we have this word Occident, uh, uh, and because. We are going down. We, we are going towards the end of the day, uh, and the, the end of the day is the Occident itself. That is, in uh, in Arabic, you know, this is Maghreb or the Morocco. Morocco, the same name. That all means the end of the end. Of the day. Okay. Uh, but, but the end of the day, as you know, is uh, is the beginning of the night, and uh, after the night comes another day. Then, uh, every day we don't know if it will be another day tomorrow. But if there is one, it is never the same. It never the same. Uh, then what will come 
will certainly be something else than Occident. As we not, not Orient, because Orient and Occident are related, you know, and in, in a way it is a, it is the same to 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 call it uh, oneself Occident or to call oneself uh, Orient, the land of the growing uh, sun, like Japan, or to call oneself the land of the middle, the, land, the middle empire, which was uh, self name of China. No, no, maybe, maybe what will come will, uh, will be quite different to all this orientation, beside or apart or without orientation, or, or it, has, it will have to do with the other uh, opposition, which is North and South. In a way, Occident is mainly uh, with North. No? But South, what is South? South is uh, a big part is Africa and South America. And uh, of course, not everything in the south is from the south, like Australia. Australia maybe does not belong to the south, certain extent. No, New Zealand, no, but but no. I mean, in the in the in the spirit, in the force. Um, maybe 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 there is something. Uh, I would say coming from Africa, for example, or coming from South America, but maybe that has no much meaning to say to say that. Uh, maybe it is much more complicated. Maybe it is it is some I don't know some. I would say Africanity, which is already uh, in the partly in the European consciousness, partly, uh, at least in European art, even, or, or maybe in, in an American one. So, <clears throat> so we, 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 of course, we, we cannot predict. It is unpredictable. But what is there unpredictable is that the humanity itself is unpredictable for, for itself. Imagine the people in the 15th century who could imagine what, what the, even what the, the 18th century was. And it was already coming. So, So that's it. Now some something is coming. It will take a very long, long time. So that means that now we 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 can be aware to everything that is the sign of. Uh, or all sign of disturbation of the Occident, we are interesting. For example, we are, we are in front of, of, uh, of uh, medical problems that we, we never expected before. Ah, this is interesting. It is not only uh, painful or, no, 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 it is something more, more, something more is given by the, the questions, problems uh, we have. Uh, Simonet, I don't know if you want to ask 
Right on. Oh, uh, I'm still here. You don't see me? Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, I think you, you are. You are leaving. You are leaving now. Oui, oui, si je peux, oui, si je peux. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. No, no. From the heart. No, no, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And we hope to have you again uh, as a as a guest speaker, hopefully in, in a real space. Volontiers. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully next year, if things go well. Mm -hmm. Hopefully next year in Paris, we all hope. Um, okay. I see a lot of I see a lot of thank you notes coming okay. in. So. If, if if there is no longer virus, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. We all hope for that, and um, thank you, and have a very good evening. Maybe thank you. Good rest of summer. So what I have to do now yeah. is. For those, for those will be tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow, I hope Nancy Mate will be uh, more. It will be possible to do with web webcams tomorrow for my class.